Pokemon Showdown, the lifeblood of competitive Pokemon. It not only lets us play and test out our teams without the hours of grinding an in-game team, but it also lets us experience metagames with a unique rule set that would otherwise be impossible in-game. The team behind Showdown does a great job keeping everything going smoothly, but with all that said, it kind of looks like... To their credit, up to Gen 6 looks great and they continue to include 3D models from the main games and they add new animations for new moves when new moves do get released. So what more could you really do? Well on a whim I started a journey, a journey to make Showdown look as close to Gen 9 as possible. This is that not so smooth journey. It all started one December day when a huge snowstorm plowed through the Midwest. I sat there looking at the current skins available on Stylish. Stylish is a browser extension, no this is not an ad, that lets you insert your own CSS into a website. What that means is you can alter and rearrange any existing objects on a website. The most popular and recent submission to Showdown was a Gen 8 inspired skin that makes Showdown widescreen, moves the characters into the map, and animates the weather conditions. Though this was an improvement, something puzzled me. If you can animate the weather, what's stopping you from animating, say, the background? How hard can a little alteration to a background be? First thing was to see what I was working with. Nice thing about CSS is you can inspect any web page and just see it. And using my rusty web design coding skills and a lot of Google, I chipped away at the code, seeing what could be altered, and I discovered you can alter just about everything on Showdown. So my mind immediately decided to change everything. How hard could it be to move a few buttons around? I don't want to go into any coding, but simply put, selecting and altering existing code without the ability to add anything new was a much bigger ordeal than I originally thought. Coding troubles aside, let's talk about the fun stuff, the UI. If we want to get this to look as close to possible to this, we have a lot of work to do. So let's start with the most overlooked aspect in design, font. First thing was to find a Google font that matches as close to Scarlet's font as possible. Gen 9 uses this really squished Serif Sans font. I like it. After some searching, the closest I could find was this font. But on to a bigger decision. I wanted the skin to work in full screen and be really big without getting blurry. It took some tinkering, but I decided to make the battle area much bigger, the bottom UI small and thin, and the battle log much, much smaller. The idea is that you could screen record replays and the battle itself in about 720 or more, and the entire page along with the battle log in 1080p. Content creation was guiding a lot of these decisions. Having battles much bigger would also give real estate to the buttons I will need to bring up from the bottom area. A big change I needed to do was get the attack selection buttons to look like the game. There's the black default look, the yellow hover look, and when you select the move, it gives off a brighter yellow glow. The normal buttons do something similar, so the best start was to just screen capture the buttons. Easy. Well, each type needed its own image, so 3 times 18 equals enough, but eventually I had a system down, and then it was done. In Showdown, a Pokemon stat bar looks like this, and I need to look like this. A big change, but the hardest was actually just moving these things. Showdown places them above their heads, but I need them on the sides. And placement needs to work a bit differently for doubles. Coding aside, I even went as far as copying the hue of green that Scarlet and Violet used. But I did have to slim them down so they wouldn't take up so much vertical real estate. We give the status changes an updated look, and we're on our way. I first wanted these at the bottom and I was going to place them in a team preview box just like the game. I made graphics for it and everything. Unfortunately, the icons stopped working once it got too far away from the starting location for some reason. So after wasting some hours on that, I decided to mimic the Pokeballs in Scarlet's UI instead and I placed them right by the HP bars. In game this button is memorizing, it's like they use their entire budget on this one button. I like how it moves so I need to get this thing in front of a green screen so I can edit it in video form, but it's also green. So I tried to pseudo red screen, didn't work, wasted time, it's so glowy that you're forced to see some red, so I went to a lake instead because a blue glow looks better than a red. I created a nice background, copied the designs of Scarlet's icons while switching, did a bunch of coding, and there we are done. A pretty stylish bottom bar, I do say so myself, but now we're on to the climax. 
Showdown will grab 1 to 19 backdrops, so I went out, found 19 key locations that I thought were the most diverse and visual pleasing. Then I swapped up the test background I was using with the green screen, created a display overlay in OBS, and then went to each area with the overlay on top. With this setup, I could make sure everything was aligned, so I went to each area proud that I studied photography and perspective in college. With the green screen setup, this has to go smoothly as I record footage that will perfectly loop as a GIF. No, the perspectives for singles and doubles are slightly different, requiring careful tinkering for a shot that would work for both. Oh, and Pokemon wouldn't stop spawning clouds? There are so many clouds in this game, and you can't loop clouds. Oh, and when the clouds finally disappear, it starts raining, or Pokemon reappears, or the day ends and you have to wait 30 minutes until the night is over. But after a long grind, I got footage good enough for alteration. Okay, so we have a couple problems. One, this gentleman is in the way, and two, so is this map. And yeah, I did try selfie mode, I even got some great shots during early builds, but the perspective of the Pokemon were just too big. But back to the map, it thankfully had a simple solution. If you hit X, the map disappears and it takes the game a second to load the actual pause screen. So you do have a bit of time to snap a pick and overlay that corner. The character on the other hand, I had to use Photoshop. Gross. But it does have the clone tool and other magical magic for this exact situation. For the looping to work, I just basically faded the footage into itself at good times, or more rarely boomerang the shot, mostly for clouds. Some shots did require some extra steps and creativity. Finally, we're to the weather. For rain, sandstorm, snow, and sun, I found great overlays that worked nicely. For the terrains and, say, trick room, I had to get a bit more creative. Terrains, I used a fog overlay, altered the perspective some, added a color, and some sort of particle-like element that tied it all together. For trick room, I made the surface using some abstract square patterns, added a gradient, and altered the surface perspective to look like it fit over my backgrounds. There were some technical difficulties getting all these elements to work, and I actually do still want to go back to some of the weathers and make them look even better yet, but overall they do look really good animated. And drum roll, this is the final project and the end to our journey. If you like what you see or want to have a say in future updates to the project, consider the project's Patreon link below. With enough support, I have plans like adding more backgrounds, tackling the team builders page, a version that shows the Pokemon at the correct size, and much much more. Either way, I hope you enjoyed the new look, link in the description, it's super easy to add to Chrome, thanks for watching. Hey, it's future me. I went to upload the style to stylish and turns out you cannot use an import code. Basically what this means is the font will be set to a more default font, not the one seen in this video and not the one that closely resembles Scarlet and Violet. So if you're picky about your font like I am, I have a simple workaround. When you add the style to stylish, you have to select to edit it. And within there is the first line of code that's commented out, it's disabled. So all you have to do is delete the comment line before and after it and the code will be active again. 